lesson on still life. Now we've done still life with one object, the duck, and now we're going to do a still life with two objects, which I thought would be fun to do a pair of um, snow boots. So you're welcome to follow along at home with my snow boots, or you can pick your own favorite pair of shoes. You could pick flip-flops or favorite sandals or any kind of shoe that you really like, but it's kind of ironic, kind of funny, that today, which is the hottest day that we've had so far this year, we are doing snow boots. <laughs> so probably be pretty hot to wear them. So anyway, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about how we're going to arrange our still life. So a really fun fact about still life is that other famous artists have used their shoes to practice on. And one is named Vincent Van Gogh, the famous painter that you've heard so much about, has a famous painting that uh, is of his of a pair of shoes. So you're going to be among famous artists when you do your shoes today. So if you were to do one object, just one boot, and you're welcome to do that, it's just a lot more straightforward. You just do the outline of the shape, and then you start doing all the details inside the shoe. But if you add two, it gives you experience with having one in the front and the other boot in the back. So this whole area here that is hidden is for uh, you to show that perspective. Um, this one is in the front, this one is in the back. It's going to have a little bit of a shadow on it and it just has makes it a little bit more interesting. And it's just a good skill to have. You could apply it to any two objects that you want to put together in a still life. So let's figure out what combination we want to make, where we want these boots to be placed. So think about it with me. You could just have them very straightforward like this. You can have them like that. You can have them right next to each other like I'd showed you before. Or you could have one just leaning over with the sole showing, which I think is kind of fun. I think let's try that. We just make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put these laces over here, coming down in front of these boxes. So that's the other thing too. Find something that you can place your objects, your shoes on top of, which raises them up a little bit, which is a little bit more my eye level for doing the drawing. Okay, so we're just going to be wild and risky and crazy. We're not going to use pencil and uh, eraser this time. We're going to uh, use a Sharpie. Just to and I'm going to get everything set up. Make sure that I am looking at the whole picture. So I see the top of this boot and because this one is in the front, I'm going to do it first. So I'm going to figure out my, my starting point. Just when we, just like when we draw an animal, this doesn't have an eye like an animal does. So I'm going to have to just say, okay, I'm going to pick the tip of the shoe where the toes are and I'm going to go over the top and notice the curve and that it's straight and that it's down. And I'm going to look at the relationship between this and the table edge. So let me get started. I have to make sure that I leave room for the top of this boot in the back. So I'm going to come down and do it about here. All right. I'm seeing not just the front of the sole, but I'm seeing all the way to the tip of the toe. So I have to keep in mind where that curve goes. So it goes, make sure I leave enough room for this boot over here. So let's see, maybe I'll make it go this way. It'd be a lot easier. That's what I'm going to do. Landscape. Okay, so I am going to 
make sure I can see everything, leave plenty of room for this boot. And I'm going to go up, across, and over, and it comes down. And it's a little wobbly because I'm just being wobbly today, but it makes it look more real because this is definitely wobbly. It's not completely smooth. So then it comes down to about here and across and down again. It comes across and it starts going up. All right, that's the general outline. Then I'm going to do the back part that I can see it comes down like that and then the other back part sits about here so at any, if at any time you want to stop and get caught up just go ahead and stop the video and um, put it on a freezed frame of just the still life and do it on your own. You don't have to do it at the speed that I'm doing it. All right, so then I'm going to do this part that I can see, which doesn't take up that much room. And it starts about here. It goes like this, and then I see the fluffy wooly part. And then there's a little part right here where the top of the boot, uh, this hides the tip of that fur. So I'm going to leave that open, and then I'm going to down here like this and like this all right so there's the outline of that front I'm going to leave all the details and that looks like a funny blob right there it looks very abstract but once I put in all the details and the laces it's going to look uh, like what it is all right so now I'm going to do I'm going to start right here because I'm just going to do the whole outline and make sure I have enough room. So I'm going to go up right around here is where there's a connection between these two boots. It goes up, up, up about like that and it comes out for the fur at the top and it comes down. Now, just like how we do fur and furry mammals, we make a little jaggedy line or a, or a furry line. You don't make a straight line for fur. All right, so there's that one side, and then we have the tongue that kind of comes out here and goes down, and then we have the other furry side. So I'm just doing the top, and then I'm going to look carefully. I don't want to do all of those details right now, but I'm going to just kind of figure out how I'm going to come down. Let's see. That might be tricky, you know, if you don't want to do all the details of this lace, you don't have to, but if you want to do it in, a, in your own creative way, just to give the impression of laces, you can do it that way too. So let's see what I will do. I think I'm going to just stop there with the top and then I'm going to come down and see how the bottom looks. So right in between, peeking its way through in the back, I see the heel of that back boot and it comes down about like this. It's a slight angle and then it has a little bump like that and then we see some jaggedy edges that describe the sole of the other shoe and I don't I'm not going to make it exact because I want to just kind of give the impression that that's the vibram sole and then it goes up and up and across and there we we're seeing these these curvy lines which uh, have the stitching on them I'm going to describe that And then it goes all the way back in the same direction. And then I'm going to go up. And this whole thing is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to just try to figure out what I should do. You can be thinking about it too. How do you want to do it? 
Okay, so now the laces are in the way. So now I'm thinking, okay, does that look like a boot? I think it's starting to look like a boot in here. So just to make me feel a little bit better, like I'm actually getting somewhere and making it look like a boot, I'm going to describe some of these details which are going to make it look more bootish. So let me do that right here. And see, I'm seeing that these different lines right here describe the shape of this, the dimension of the tip of the boot. And it just kind of like when you do the inside of an animal body, it shows its shape too. So I'm going to make little lines here. And here it kind of follows along, just some of the markings on there. And There's also that seam that attaches the sole to the uh, main body of the boot. So I'm going to do that part too. Kind of comes down like this and it goes up. And it's not exactly accurate, but it definitely makes it look like a shoe, I think. Like a boot. Okay, and then I want to just, just for fun, I think I'm going to put these stitches in because the stitches really do make it look like a boot when you do stitches. So I'm going to make little dotted lines that really, really help me to describe it being a boot. Some cobbler stitched this or a machine or in a boot factory they did that and that just really does help there's some other stitching and but I'm going to do the lace first I'm going to do a lace I think that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to make the laces that's going to help me if I just make these laces so I'm going to make these curvy lines parallel together so it's going to kind of go, make it like that and then another little dots on it that looks like a lace huh and then there's another, like a little snake that comes down and hides behind the back of the boot, but that really does make it look like laces. And if any time I'm going way too fast for you, just stop your video and catch up. But already it's starting to look more like a boot, and so I'm going to do where the laces are tied to a little knot and it comes down. And this helps me cover that area that I didn't know what to do with. So now that I'm doing this, it makes it look much more real now. So now I can go ahead and do the other side behind that lace. It comes up and there we go. All right, now I'm starting to like it a lot better. So I'm gonna finish the top right here a little bit more, comes down. I am learning to get to know this snow boot more than I ever have in my life. <laughs> okay, and just like when you get to know flowers or any kind of object, you're developing your ability to see things that you've never really noticed before. So that's what artists do. They learn to see more and more clearly and more details too. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out what to do with this side. I see that there are one, two, three, four, five little loops that, little rings that these laces go through. So I'm going to just make it really loose and fun. I'm not going to try to worry too, I'm not going to worry too much about having it exactly right because I want this to be a fun drawing and so I'm making a loop here and then the lace goes through it, like that. It comes out the other side. Wow, I've never done that before. This is a whole new thing for me. I remember doing a pair of shoes when I was in a college art class, but that was a long time ago. One of my students sent me a really great drawing of a shoe that he did one of my intermediate students. So a lot of people are already thinking about this idea, which is a great idea. So there's one hook or one loop. There's another one. 
There are reflections. There's all sorts of lights and darks in that. You could make it really um, uh, detailed if you want, or you could just keep it simple. It's kind of up to you. So that's one, two, and then it goes down to three, and I'm going to make going through three, four, and as you notice, there's something that's kind of going through it, but I'm just going to ignore it and just hopefully nobody will see what uh, that I've left out some parts, which is completely okay if you want to do it. You just want to make it something that works for you. Keep it simple. There are these little shapes here with stitching on them and I'm doing, as you can see, I'm doing it fast because I am not doing this to make it absolutely perfect because you know, if I did, then I would use a camera and be a photographer, but I'm an artist. So I'm making it my style. I'm making it a little bit fun and playful. I might color these boots a little bit different than boring. Or I might keep it exactly realistic in color and you can do the same thing. So then here's some other stitching lines. There's stitching lines that go right here. Oh, I forgot, I need to do the lace. So I'm gonna make cheat a little bit. I'm gonna make the lace come down here. And there it is. There's a lace coming down. So I've got one lace here, one lace here. And I'm going to do one more stitching thing that I can see. Okay, it goes like this. All right, so I've got one here and one here, and I'm going to make this awfully, there's some lines here that show that this is in back, and then I'm going to make some tread marks, which, which keep us from sliding around in the snow when we're using, um, using them. So I'm just going to make them all these different shapes that... You can make the shapes however you want, but I'm kind of doing an abbreviation of what I see. And this is just the way the uh, treads are on my shoe. And it just, it's kind of an interesting thing. I've got some geometric abstract designs here on the side of the boots, which makes a kind of interesting idea for a drawing, the little triangle shapes and if you want to get into details, you can. I'm going to make this really dark because it is dark, but it's black as you can see. So if you don't want to go into, it looks like kind of a star right here in the middle. Or uh, yeah, it's kind of a star. Whoever paid attention to the treads of a snow boot. I don't know if I'm the first one in the world that ever did this, but, and as you can tell, there's dirt and sand stuck in there from the last time I hiked around and then I was doing that one time in the snow and it was so much fun a few years ago when we had a lot of snow. Ah, just thinking about that is cooling me off. Doesn't it make you feel cool thinking about snow? <sighs> All right, so I um, I kind of messed up here because this is actually blank. Uh, these are little, small little shapes over here. And you know what? If you can't see all these details, just make them up. But there are two um, little treads like you see on the bottom of the tire that keep you from slipping and sliding on the snow and falling flat on your face. So we love treads because they keep us safe. So I can just go ahead and color those in. And if I want to just completely erase this mistake with my black pen, I can do that. And so can you. No one will ever know that I made that mistake. Ha ha ha. All right. So does it look like a 
snow boot to you. All right, so as you can see, I don't know if you can see it from where you are, this is very black, very dark gray and black, and then here is light gray and even lighter gray or tan, and this is the lightest. So there are three different variations. So you can just go ahead with your color pencil. We'll do that later, but let me just finish and make sure I've got everything. I don't want these floating in the middle of the air, and so I'm going to make the box and the horizon line, which is somewhere over here. And I'm going to leave out those laces, I think, just because they're not really necessary. That's all you need to do. If you want to do anything else in the background, you can, but that's a lot to deal with right there. And it's going to, you know, if you want to add anything else, you can. If you want to add more detail about what it is sitting on. And of course, the shadow is a really good thing, thing to add. This is all completely shaded blackness. And then back here, there's a shadow. And right under here is going to be a shadow too. So you can go over that with your marker too. Shadows always make things look more interesting and real, like it's really in time and space and has gravity and is in a place that you can actually touch shadows. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and then in a little bit I'm going to be coloring it in. So. Together.